Praise the Lord. It's good to have this time together. Uh, Pastor Tucker with the New Testament Christian Church here in Irving, Texas. Uh, thankful for an opportunity to be able to greet everybody and welcome everyone to our evening service. Had a wonderful, wonderful time this morning. I hope you were able to join us, and um, I haven't, again, tonight we'll be moving it to uh, uh, YouTube and then also to our website so that it'll be there to look at our service there as well. Uh, but tonight I wanted to kind of continue on something that I was looking at this morning, and so why don't you just join us and get a place where you can worship God with us. Um, don't just put it on your phone and be about vacuuming or dusting or anything else, but let's just spend some time and worship God this evening. If you have um, a need, a prayer request, and you want us to, to pray with you or pray for you, please put it in the comments. In fact, why don't you put in the comments uh, your name and where you're listening to it from, where you're watching it from. Uh, we're, each week we're trying to get better at meeting people, following up, outreach, and just it helps us out when we know who's listening and who's where, where you're at. And so if you would, please uh, let us know. And, and most important, pray for us. Uh, throughout the week, we really need prayer. I, you know, a long time in seminary, they taught us that you have to be, you have to pray, but you also have to be prayed for. And so we solicit your prayers. We ask people, uh, spend some time with God during the week, praying about your finances and your strength and your joy. And please pray for the preacher, pray for uh, the church, help uh, that we would have the right message and that we have the right programs. In fact, we're just, this week we're going to begin putting together our very first online vacation Bible school. And so that's going to be very exciting uh, to put all that together and to see how everything comes together on that regard. Um, and that's something we never thought would have a vacation Bible school online. But by God's grace, I think we can do it. And since this is a situation and the kids and some of the other ones and the adults said they actually were looking forward to a, a vacation Bible school as well, we're going to give it a try here. So we're thankful for the opportunity to be able to do whatever we can to minister the very word of God. And so, again, I wanted to take a look at a couple of things from this morning. Let us know what we can do for you as far as a prayer time. And if you even just want somebody maybe to follow up with a phone call or, or just some time of prayer, let us know in the comments also. But right now, let's go ahead and, and look at it. We're going to be looking at tonight uh, at 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. Uh, in church in the mornings, Sunday mornings, I have somebody that they like to know ahead of time so they can queue it up on their laptop and they can be reading the scriptures ahead of time what I'm going to be preaching on. And so that's when I have to remind myself <laughs> to make sure I let everybody know ahead of time. But for tonight, our Bible reading is going to be in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. Let's look at that. And there were set four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we'll enter to the city, there are families in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come into the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses and the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. But one of the things, that, uh, one scripture I want to look at tonight uh, for my text, and that is verse 3. And there are four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Why sit we here until we die? And let's use that tonight to preach a message. We still have to move. We still have to move. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness, your mercy. I ask, God, that you accomplish your divine will tonight. Help us, Lord God, to preach and teach your word. God, to encourage. God, to strengthen. To build up the faith of those, God, that are, are going through situations right now. And let each one know that there is a God in heaven. We give you all the glory, all the honor, in Jesus' name. Amen. See, the, the, the city right at this time was going through a, a siege. Those from Syria had come and gathered around the city. 
and it was very, becoming very hard to find uh, food. In fact, there was one of the stories that came up about some uh, two ladies that one of them had uh, eaten their baby, and, and, and it was just a very horrible, horrible famine that was going on at this time. And we see here that uh, Elijah was there. And he had made a, uh, a prophecy and said that God was going to make a way about the, how much they would have uh, the next day. And it was so unbelievable that one the Lord said in, in chapter 2, Then the Lord in whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make a window, make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, there shall not, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And he, he was not believing the man of God, not believing God could do it. But the, the point that we're making here is that Elisha was letting everybody know, even though the situation is very desperate, even though the situation is very bad, God is getting ready to make a difference. I think that's one of the things I, I want to continue. Uh, we were looking at this morning, uh, how that uh, as God is, is moving in our lives, we have to stay busy about the Father's business. We cannot uh, begin to just treat God uh, uh, like some new God that we pull off the shelf and, and we worship God whenever we want to worship God. Then we put that old God back on the shelf. That's not the God that saved us. That's not the God that healed us. And many people have forgotten their relationship and, and from where the blessings come from. And so I preached this morning about the remembering, uh, looking at the, the forgotten God. How that there are so many times people don't remember uh, that it took a, a walk with God and a relationship with God. And they had to continue that. Because if you don't continue that, you don't have the blessings of God. You don't have the, the joy and the strength that comes from a walk with God. And so tonight I want to just take that just a little step further. How that there are so many times people are going through some very horrible, horrible situations. We started a prayer uh, request and, and, and we have 500 people that have asked for a prayer uh, and, and over the course of our asking uh, for people prayer and then we send out Bible studies we, we encourage people and, and there are those that join us in our church services online and, and it's just a, a, a wonderful time but you see as we're going through that I, I see a lot of the people they're really struggling they're going through financially hard times. They're having a lot of stress in their family, a lot of stress in their marriage. There's a lot of family drama. And we hear this a lot from people asking for a prayer about my family is going through a horrible time or, or the kids don't speak to the mother anymore or the mother's not speaking to the kids anymore or this one and that one. And it really is just a very, a lot of hard situations going on. And, and I tell everyone, you know, God's going to work everything out. Keep your mind focused on God. I know we're going through hard times. I know we're going through situations but do you know there's still a God in heaven and God is still the difference maker you see this that we're going to look at tonight and what we've got here in the uh, second Kings chapter 7 is still applicable even to this day how that the man of God said I know things are bad I, I know things are trying I know there's a challenge in your lives of what we're all going through uh, but be of good cheer there's a God that can make a difference uh, and I want to share this with you tonight those of you that are going through something right now those of you that are having troubles right now those of you that are, are challenged right now there is a God in heaven and he is still the difference maker all you've got to do is get to God I, I was uh as we're praying and just watching what God can do, those that are staying are, are, are working on their salvation, working on their prayer time, working on their church attendance, making sure that they're giving themselves to God and, and really just keep them going with their Christianity and working on that. Those are the ones that are still being blessed, that God is still moving in their heart and their mind. But then you find there are those uh, that because of all that they've got going on, uh, they're not working. Uh, they're not giving the due diligence to their Christianity. I ask sometimes as I'm talking to different ones, trying to counsel with them and try to understand what they're going through. Because they told me they were going through so many problems and they've got so much going on in their life. And, and, and this problem happened and that problem happened. And so we as ministers were always trained to ask, how is everything between you and God? I, I know you've got these problems and you said if this money doesn't come in, you're not going to be able to pay your light bill. If this money doesn't come in, you're not going to be able to pay your carpet. I understand that. But for just a second, I want to know how is everything between you and God. 
Oh, somebody will say, you know what? I just not have not been reading my Bible like I should. I love God, but I just have not been reading my Bible. Somebody else said, yes, I, I, I'm still a Christian. Now, I don't go to church, but I'm still a Christian. I, I don't read my Bible. I don't pray like I used to, but I'm still a Christian. Somehow or another, people are, are, are settling down into this kind of lifestyle. We call ourselves a Christian, but there's no Christian labor. There's no Christian work. There's not being about the Father's business. And if we're going to be servants of the Most High God, if we're going to be the sheep of His pastor and recognize Him as the great shepherd, then brothers and sisters, tonight, we've got to make up in our mind, I've got to keep on doing what the shepherd tells me to do. I've got to continue to do what my God has called us to do. And so I wanted to take a look at it because God's been dealing with uh, my heart about uh, different ones. Uh, how if they'll just get back in the boat there. Uh, if, I know they've got a lot of problems. Uh, I know they've got all kinds of situations. Uh, but if you take one step, God will take two. Uh, if you just step out in faith uh, and believe that He is still there, He can still work out your problems. Do you know that God can do just that? So I wanted to take a look at this. Because here it is in, uh, in 2 Kings... Again, we see a bad situation. We see a siege and we see uh, all kind of heartache. There's starvation everywhere. And, and these four men uh, that are looking at themselves, they've already, in spite of this uh, the famine and all that's going on there in the city, they had their own personal difficulties with the leprosy disease. They had their own uh, bodily problems and, and, and the soreness and, and all that was going on due to the leprosy virus. And they had all that going on, but they came to the, the thought as they were sitting there and, and they asked the question of themselves, why sit we here? We're at the gate. And they had to stay uh, a certain distance away from uh, other people and they had to yell and clean and we've all have mentioned that in times past. And so they were there uh, outside the gate, not able to go into the city anyway. But outside the city was also uh, the, the Syrian army that had see, besieged the, the city of Samaria. And so they were sitting there and, and they made it to their mind and said, now, if we go into the city, which they were not supposed to do, uh, if they go into the city, there's famine there, and, it, and we shall die there. But if we also sit here, we're going to die here also. And so they came to the realization, hey, we've got to do something. We cannot just sit here in our misery and in our problems and in our situation, in our sickness and all that's going on and just sit here and die. We must move. We've got to do something. Why, why are we going to just sit here? Why are we just going to allow all this to happen on around about us? No matter what we do, and there's the, in the thought in the mind that there's a possibility that we're going to die. If we go into the city, the famine may kill us. Or maybe there will be someone there because we're not supposed to be in there will kill us. But at the same time, if we sit here, we're going to face the same end because of the army and also because, again, because of the starvation. And so they made their mind to get up and move. And as they began to make up their mind to get up, you see, they came up to the camp of the Syrians. God had made a sound come into the camp and all of the Syrians had, walked, had left because they thought that the Egyptians were coming or, or help was coming for uh, Samaria. And so they all left. And as the men began to come in, they found all this loot. They found all these supplies. And they began to try to bring it all together. After this, put this, fill this pocket, fill that pocket. And then they begin to realize, wait, we're doing wrong. We need to take word to the king and let him know that all this is here. And, and they can have all this and that the enemy has left. And so they sent word to the king and, and they came and got all the stuff that they had. But you see the thing that we look at. And, and, and we also make sure that we, everybody realizes that the prophecy of Elijah, it came to pass. Just like Elisha said, that because of all the loot that was there and, and, and the, they were able to get all the supplies and the resources. And because the enemy had left, that next day, just as Elijah said, the famine was eased. People had food. And those that had thought that it was not going to happen were actually were trampled over. They're at the gate. How did this blessing come? And this is what I want to just share with you just for a little while tonight. I want you to stick with me here tonight just for a little while in this lesson. I, I, I want God to be able to bless you, move in you and through you as you just allow the Spirit of God to deal with your heart about this very po uh, point right here. And that is, uh, the blessing came because there were four men uh, that decided to move. Uh, they could not just sit where they were at. Uh, they had to get up and do something. Uh, and as they began to run uh, and find to the Syrian camp, they found it empty, uh, uh, abandoned. Uh, and they found all the supplies 
and resources. But you see, the blessing came, as Elijah said, because people had a mind to move and to be and to do something. Brother, and tonight, you can't just sit there in your problems. You can't just sit there in your misery. You can't just sit there as you're going through situations and just say, woe is me. I'm having a hard time. And that's no disrespect to those that are having a hard time. I know what you're going through. I understand the problems and the, and the, and the things on your mind. But you got to cast all that off. The Word of God says cast all your care upon Him because what? He cares for you. Do you know that God cares that you can't pay your bills? Do you know that God cares because you're sick? Do you know that God cares because you're sitting home and you're feeling lonely? Maybe you've had a loved one has passed away. Maybe you've had a friend or someone that you're really dear to has passed away. And it's on your mind. The situation that's on your mind. I understand that. But you still have to move. Blessings come when you still stay at it. You have to make up your mind. I can't just quit. I've come too far to give up now. Sometimes, and I understand as I'm talking to different people, they have such a, a you know, just, I just can't take much more. I'm at my limit. Uh, this, 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 this whole situation, it, it's, just, it's just awful. I saw a, a cartoon the other day and it just made me laugh and, and I know it may, it's maybe hard to convey this uh, uh, from the cartoon, but it was saying somebody, who, whoever's supposed to go to Nineveh, would you just go ahead and go? And if you remember, <laughs> that was an allusion to Jonah uh, how that because he was not going where he was going all the waters began to become all stormy and, and, and the boat began to sh shake in all the kind of situations and finally they had to come find out why this happened so it was like, who is ever supposed to go there? Would you just go? I don't understand we're going through hard times right now. I understand a lot of people are going through some hard situations. But your blessing will come. Not because you sit on the couch and do nothing. Not because you just sit there and let the waves overtake you. And let all the problems overtake you. But when you begin to say, wait a minute. I'm going to pray one more prayer. I'm going to be with God. I'm going to go to one more church service. And I'm going to shout for the glory of God. Make up your mind. You still have to move. You see, you begin to get your mind a focus on keep on going for God. That's when your blessings come. I realize that right now there's a lot of people that the enemy would just love. Just love for you just to sit there and do absolutely nothing uh, and just sit there in misery. Uh, sometimes we get people having the prayer request uh, and they send us a prayer request and, and they ask us to pray for them and then I try to follow up uh, and say, can I spend some time in prayer? Can we talk about maybe some things that you're going through? Uh, I want to invite you to our church services. Uh, I don't want any of that. I just want you to pray for me. So a lot of them, uh, not every one of them, uh, because we've got a lot of them that are really started trying to get in, but there are definitely some. Uh, I don't want to pray. I don't want to read my Bible. Uh, I, I don't want to come to church. Uh, I'm not going to even call, uh, uh, get online to watch you online. I just want you to pray for me. You see, it takes more than just having a preacher pray for you. You have to be involved in getting your blessing. You have to be involved in receiving from God. These four men, I, I love what they said, why sit we here? Why are we just going to sit here and just accept the situation? Let's just do something. If we're going to die, we're going to die. But we've got to do something. And I really believe there's times that you just got to get up and walk in the faith of Almighty God and do what God wants you. Claim His, uh, His blessing of faith and claim that, that blessing. Healing is coming. My joy is coming. My peace is coming. I'm going to get up and do something and be about the business of God and do all I can. You see, when we begin to move through obstacles, that is when and God begins to bless. I know sometimes it's very hard. Recently I had a situation where a um, water pump went out and then uh, uh, right before then my wife was uh, very ill and, and had, a, uh, had to go through a situation and, and that was a challenge for us and just all kind of things were going on. But you know what? We don't have the option of just sitting home and doing nothing. I don't have the option of just saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a break from church for a while. I'm not going to read my Bible. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to spend time with God. I'm, I'm going to take a little time off. I don't have that option. Well, even if I had the option, I wouldn't do it. God's been too good to me. He's always been right there for us, and God's made a way. Now, this may sound pretty funny for some. Some may not, uh, may not think, but you know, but it, our stimulus, a lot of it went into taking care of the car payment. But it's wonderful to know that when that situation happened, 
there was some money in the bank. You know, we can say God is a good God. God makes a way. God knows how to help us. God knows exactly uh, when to move. God knows how to move. And we've got to make up our mind to keep on going. You see, I want to share something with you. When you have a lot of situations, you can either let the situations overtake you and you just keep uh, uh, letting the enemy take you further and further away from God. Or you can make up your mind, I will get close to God. I will get my blessing. I want my blessing. Let's look at the little old lady that had the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 verse 28. She made up in her mind that I've had enough of the quacks. I've had enough of those that could not provide. So as she spent all of her money on, on different ones trying to give her a solution and she still was sick. On a particular day she found out Jesus is coming to town. And as she began to look up, she saw a crowd. And there's people all around Jesus. And they began to come into the town. She made it for her mind, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And she began to make her way there. And make her way there. Now think about this. This little old lady already bent over because of her issue of blood. Already weakened in the state that she was in. And there's a crowd there all around Jesus. She could have been like some. Ah, it's not going to happen. I'm just going to give up. And I would imagine there were some that would have that mindset. But you see, sometimes you get to a place, and I want my blessings. I need a blessing. Have you ever been like that? I, I need a, I, I, I need my blessing. I need my joy. I, I need my peace. I, I want my blessing. I want my peace. I, I'm not going to settle for anything less. Uh, she was had something on the inside that said keep on going. Uh, and so she began to crawl uh, and make her way through the crowd. Uh, maybe have knock this person over. Maybe somebody knocked her out of the way. Uh, maybe she had to go between somebody's legs and, and reach out. But somehow or another, she made it all the way to Jesus uh, and, and touched his garment. Uh, and as he began to feel the faith of this woman he stopped and said who touched me now the disciples were somewhat incredulous they said well don't you see the crowd all around you and you ask who touched you but see everybody else was just looking for a magic show Everybody else uh, was just looking for entertainment. They'd heard the prophet from Galilee was coming, uh, and they were just looking at as far as a, a celebrity or, or notoriety. Uh, they weren't really looking for a blessing. They weren't looking to get something. Uh, but there was a soul there uh, that was tired of being in pain. Uh, there was a person there that wanted the blessing uh, of healing in her body, uh, and she was willing uh, to reach out to get her blessing and say, if I could just touch it, if I can just touch it, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And when she did that, uh, she received her blessing. Uh, Jesus looked at it and said, go that way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Looking at this, said, who touched me? That woman touched me with faith. You got to move. You can't just sit there and let the devil step all over you. Okay, so you've got some hard times right now. Pick up that Bible and read it again. Get on your knees some more and pray and spend that quality time with God. I know somebody said, I can't be around a lot of people right now. I've got to have on my mask and i got to do all this. I understand that. But you can still watch church online. You can still pray in your living room. You can still get a hold of God. You can still pour out your soul and say, God, I need you. God, come into my heart, my mind. God, do something in my very soul. You see, God wants to bless you. As I was mentioning this morning, I truly believe that there is a blessing with your name on it. As you are desperate for your blessing, God can and will bless you. Mark 5 and 28. For she said, if I'm going to touch by his clothes, I'm going to be whole. you got to move through obstacles. You see, God is a good God. And God wants us to win. He's made us winners by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because of what he's done for us, he's wiped the slate clean. He's enabled us to come and have sweet fellowship with the Father. Because of the blessings of God and because of the love of Jesus Christ, we have now the opportunity to cry out, Abba, Father, and just expect our blessings to come in. We've got to make up our heart and mind. I want a blessing. How many of you need a financial blessing? How many of you need a healing in your body? How many of you right now uh, that need just God just to touch your mind? You got so much stress, so many problems on your mind. God, touch my mind. Amen. You know, God can do that. God can do that. But you've got to move through your eyes. We still must move. I want to share something with you right now. Just not trying to cause anybody any problem. But hopefully this will be a blessing for some. Because I see it on Facebook about different ones have been experiencing a death in the family. Different ones are experiencing problems because of this problem, person 
uh, uh, been in, you know, not just with the coronavirus, but uh, just situations are happening. And then the hospital and the bodies are breaking down, or, or maybe a, a husband or a wife has passed away. A lot of situations. But God can see you through all your tragedies. The blood of Jesus Christ can help you through all that you got going on. You see, God loves you with an everlasting love. And God gives us strength and that ability to make it through these situations. I, I'm, I'm touched. Uh, by those that have experienced death in their family. I'm saddened by those that are having to deal with all kind of problems uh, right now because of, a, a, of the loss of a good friend or, or loss of a, a loved one or, or because of somebody that you know is sick or because somebody that you know is going through a hard time. But do you know through all that you're going through, uh, keep your mind focused on the one that can help uh, and still continue allowing the problems uh, to just scream in your face. Uh, why don't we focus some time on the problem solver and let God help us through all we're going through. You see, I believe uh, he's greater than diabetes. Uh, he's greater than cancer. Uh, he's greater than the coronavirus. Uh, God is greater uh, than all the illnesses of this world. Uh, that by his stripes, uh, we are healed. Uh, and if you have the faith in Almighty God, God can help you. Uh, God can bless you. Uh, God can move in your heart and mind. Uh, and God can bless not only you, but your spouse. God can bless your children. God can bless your family. You see, we have to move. We have to move through tragedy. We've got to move through doubt. When life comes at us just throwing all kinds of things at us, we cannot just stand there uh, and allow the world to just throw all this stuff at us uh, and just stand there and take it all. Uh, we've got to keep our mind focused on God. Uh, I've got to stay on His path. Uh, I have to stay about the Father's business. Uh, I, I have to be about God's business. Uh, well, so-and-so is sick right now. Uh, and this one is hurting my heart because they're, they're, they're not going to they look like they're going to make it. Uh, or because this one just passed away. Uh, I saw over the weekend um, somebody's family had, had a some family member had passed away and they were asking for prayer because they had lost a family member. Uh, a, a couple weeks ago, uh, a friend said uh, uh, their grandbaby died and it's horrible to hear uh, the, the sadness of things that are happening now. But it, in all we got going on, give God the glory. Uh, lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, and God will see you through all that you're going through. Uh, every problem, uh, every situation. Uh, you see the word of God says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, uh, 24, verse 17. God told him uh, he had something for Ezekiel to do. Uh, there was something uh, that God wanted Ezekiel to do. Uh, and so God wanted uh, uh, Ezekiel to, to go forth uh, and to stay focused on the job he was sent him to do. He said in verse 17, Ezekiel 24 and 17, Forbear to cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tide of thy head upon, the head upon thee, and put on thy shoes, put thy shoes upon thy feet, cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. And so I spake unto the people in the morning, and at the evening my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. Brother, tonight do you hear what the Word of God is telling us? Sometimes it gets very, very personal. Sometimes it hits to our very heart, and we want sometimes just to collapse and to keep just stop all we're doing. But God is trying to bless. God's trying to move, and we've got to keep on moving. We can't just stop and allow ourselves just to go down. How many of you ever just maybe been hit by depression? Been hit by, you know, the loss of a loved one and you just start feeling like you're sinking. Oh, but by God's grace, He helps us to be on solid ground. God helps you to keep on standing. God helps us to keep on going. And as we are doing what God wants us to do, we keep on moving. We still must move. We still have to be about God's business. We're sorry for those that have passed away. Sorry for those families that are suffering tragedy. But there's other families out there that are going through the exact same thing. And they need to know about Jesus. And so you as a Christian, you as somebody who knows God, it may be hard sometimes, but you're going to have to put your faith in Almighty God and believe in the Lord and keep on going. Tell somebody else about Christ. Tell somebody else about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You see, as we continue to go on and do the Father's business, God can bless that family. God can bless this family. We share the good news of Christ with this family. Now God's able to bless them. God's able to continue to do what He wants to do uh, as long as the people of God keep on going. Uh, but when the people of God stop uh, and begin to want to just sit there uh, and allow the devil to put us uh, in an, an emotional cell uh, and we're not doing anything for Christ, uh, then you see the work of God is impacted. Uh, I don't want my uh, thoughts to be impacted in the work of God. I want to keep on going for Jesus. Uh, so therefore, sometimes uh, I've got to call upon God, especially 
when the battles get so personal, when it's so hard sometimes, because you have to overcome certain things in your own life. There's certain things that you're dealing with, that, and you just say, I, I, I don't know if I can take anything more. I, I hear a lot of times from the prayer request, I can't take not one more battle. I cannot take not one more battle. I can't promise you that there's not going to have another battle come your way. I hear what you're saying. But you see, there is a God that we serve. He knows the path that we take. He knows exactly what he's doing. In fact, the word of God teaches us he's not going to put anything more upon you than you can bear. God knows exactly what you're going through. God knows exactly what you can deal with. And so he said he's not going to put anything more upon you than you can bear. In every way, there's a way of escape. God wants you to make it to the other side of this battle. God wants you to make it to the other side of this situation. And you've got to keep on going. If you stop now and give up your salvation now, give up your walk with God now, give up your relationship with God now, it's going to be so hard. Somebody said, I believe, preacher, I'm just going to take a break. But I'll be back in church. I got a lot of things to deal with right now. But don't worry. Don't worry. I'll be back in church. And most every single time somebody has said that, we don't see them. See, it's when you start skipping church, when you start skipping your prayer time, when you start skipping your devotions, it gets easier and easier for the next time you want to skip it. The next time you don't want to come to church. The next time you don't want to read your Bible. And then by and by you look up and you're so far from the work of God that you don't realize, I, I, I can't get back. But I even try. And that's what the devil wants. Oh, we have to still keep on moving. I've got to pray. I've got to move. Even through my tragedy, I still have to trust in Jesus. We still must move. And then as we're moving, there's one important thing we've got to make up our mind. I don't know where God's taking me, but I know one thing. I'm going to continue to follow after him. See, God, I, went, I, went, I made it through the last battle. <laughs> I made it through the battle before that, but God, right now, I, just need, I need to take a break. But something about it, I feel the Spirit of God can chill and keep, keep going. God's got me keep on going. Now, God, I need to stop for a little while. But just see, the Word of God shows us here. We're the sheep of his pasture. He's the shepherd. He knows exactly what we have need of. He knows exactly where he's taking us. And we don't have the option of just stopping for a while. We've got to keep on moving. I'm not trying to get ahead of God, but I sure don't want to be dragging behind God. I want to be right where God wants him to be. I want to be in the very hand of God. And if you let God help you through your situation, and just stand with God you're going to find blessings you're going to find peace you will find joy come on now, you know what I'm talking about if you've been going through problems uh, lately, put it in your comments so I can see uh, the, your battles that you're going through situations and, and we're going to pray for you and pray with you, but you see you've got to move to stand with God. You've got to move to stand with God. You cannot stand in, in your lethargy. You cannot stand uh, away from God. You can't stand in your confusion. You can't stand in your depression. You've got to be on the move with God. You're right here. And I know, thank God you're there and, we, and you did a good job. But you see, that battle took everything out of you. And God has moved on. He's going down the road. You've got to stay with God. How do I get from this situation to where God wants me to be? That's only going to come through prayer. Spending quality time with God. I know somebody said, but you don't understand. It's hard when I got the kids here and I got the quarantine. And, and we're in the, everybody's driving me crazy. I, I, I'm having a hard time finding a place to spend with God. But you can do it. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. As we give ourselves to God, as we allow God to bless, we can move to be right where God wants us to be. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having in all, to stand. See, God, that last battle I was in, it took a lot out of me. Right. But you said, that's exactly what we're talking about. You must get your energy and all that you have from God. If it only comes from you, you can only put so much. 
You can only do so much. And then you're operating off fumes. You're just kind of, you're calling yourself a Christian, but there's no fire on the inside. And at that point, you become susceptible to the lies and all the plagues and ploys of the devil. But if you make sure that all the fire that within you, it comes from God, that you get in your knees before God and say, God, send the fire one more time, God. God, light me on fire, God. Help me, God, to be excited about you. Lord, God, give me the strength to get back up. God, give me the strength to be back out there. I want to be where you want me to be, God. I want to be the Christian that you want to be. Uh, I've fallen, uh, but God, by your grace, you can pick me back up. Uh, God, I'm weak, uh, but you can make me strong. Uh, Lord, I ask right now in the name of Jesus, help me to be where you want me to be. You have to move to stand with God. We still must move. You've got to continue on. He said, to withstand in an evil day and having done all, to stand. See, this is where I want to share with you tonight. As we opened up, we shared about the four leprous men. They had to make a decision. Why sit we here? Why are we going to just sit here? Let's do something. Tonight, you cannot allow the pressures of this virus, the pressures of all the financial situations going on, all the stress and working from home requirements and, and, and the kids being at home. All, all, you can't let yourself become overwhelmed by all that's going on to the point you lock yourself away in some cell. We must step out in faith. We must continue to move in the name of Jesus Christ and do what God's called us to do. Join us in Bible study this week, Tuesday night at 7.30. Thursday night, prayer meeting at 7.30. We're going to get together and we have a good time praying one for another. Sometimes people need to pray for their family, their selves, or whatever we got going on, but join us and do that. And then if you'd like to help us out, be a part of our online vacation Bible school, please let us know. I mentioned this morning for some, so if you guys want to be a part of that, let me know who wants to be a part and maybe what you would like to do. And let's start putting it together this week so you can put it on the schedule and, and have it. I think it's going to be a wonderful time. But again, I'm Pastor Tucker and I really want people to uh, receive the blessing of God. Hopefully this lesson tonight has been a blessing. I want to pray for you. I know there's so many right now that are needing prayer and I know there's so many right now that are going through situations. And I want to pray for you. And I know some of our attention, your, your requests, but, and I appreciate you sending requests and we're going to pray with you and pray for you. But not, don't just stop there. Join us in Bible study. Join us in prayer. Read your Bible this week. Let God be God in your life. Father, we thank you right now, God, for your goodness and mercy. And I pray, God, as we go forth this week, God, help us to step out in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord God, to be all that you want us to be. Lord, we're calling upon you right now. We know, God, that you are calling us to keep on going. The devil would have us to stop. The devil would have us, God, to, to quit because of every battle. But you're calling us to keep on going. Oh God, I have made a mind to keep on going all the way till I get to the kingdom. Till I get to the pearly gates. Lord, I want to keep on going all the way. Till I hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Keep us, Lord God. Watch over us this week. God, and protect us as we step out in faith. As we continue to move by the grace and the mercy of the Holy Ghost. God, we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you is my prayer. I'm Pastor Tucker. Please join us again this week. God bless you.